What's the last thing you were looking at last time? remembering linear algebra and it's uh, and then it's also keeping the big like the big picture in mind like just okay uh, earlier when we quantized the system you know just trying to get familiar with just trying to remember how what the goal what the goals are and, and, and how you carry that out it's just it's a lot of stuff but I think in that in those notes by her book, whichever way you want to call it, by its advice, he actually has some analysis of um, strength like experiment someplace. Oh yeah. So you can finish it up over there. Today I want to look at something else which is quite interesting. Um, I'm still going to stick with a free particle Hamilton. So Hamiltonian is just this, where we are going to replace momentum by uh, using correspondence, which means that our uh, Schrodinger equation equation I want to solve today. This is the free particle. So the solution of this Schrodinger equation is simple. You write the wave function as e to the minus i bar five of x and if you do that then this becomes minus h bar squared over t m one plus squared on phi of x is e phi of x doing the time derivative basically just drops down minus i e t over h bar h bar Minus i with this i give you plus, so you're only left with e here, and then you can cancel out the exponential factor on both sides. And this is a simple equation to solve. Okay, this is an equation. 
equation on how long it costs to do it. Right? Okay. Which means that phi of x has the form some normalization constant e to the plus or minus i k x, where k h bar k is actually Schrodinger equation with h bar squared k squared k to n e. Okay. So the solutions of this equation are two. Normalization condition normally would be that phi star of x, phi of x, dx minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1. But if you can see, if I plug this solution in here, then I would have n squared integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. minus plus i k x times e to e plus minus i k x dx which happens to be infinity, right? As long as I keep this normalization finite constant then the result of this integration is That's basically because this integral is proportional to the volume. where actually normalization has to be carried or performed differently. And then we notice actually something else that this integral is really 2 pi times the delta function in A. case where we modify how we normalize functions. There are several ways this can be accomplished, but basically it comes down to the fact that sense can be made out of this. And so the normalization we are going to use is not this one here. This is for one dimension, but 
two dimensions, we will have modification of this. So for two dimensions, you would have this. In general, in n dimensions, your pi of x will be 1 over the 2 pi to n over 2 into the i kx plus or minus. So this will be the normalization, and with this normalization, Orthogonality condition of the main functions. actually recover this but in a way that this is unacceptable this is acceptable Now, these wave functions, If I use p variable, then this normalization, if I'm labeling it in terms of this, this will be done. H bars in here, right? And so to maintain the same normalization, what will happen is that this H bar will appear in here, upper scale of variables. So the general, so I'm going to put E on it as a substrate because that corresponds to one particular energy with energy and momentum being related. E squared over to N. The general state. some function of P
choose this file P anything you want in principle. Is that a Fourier transform? That's what it is, yes. But Fourier transform is nothing more but the way to express the general state because every one of those is an eigenstate of the energy, right? And one of the two pi h bar is here, right? That comes from the wave function. And then we sum up over all the momentum. Yes, that's what you know as a Fourier transform. So the physical meaning of the Fourier transform that you are basically adding up pieces of a state. I mean, you are basically building an arbitrary state. Technically, you should have an integral over energy, but you should limit yourselves over energies to one specific one. The one where the eigenstate is. Um, what I want to do today is actually compute this for some specific choice of pi. Five P is sometimes called momentum. waves, whatever we learn today, you should say, of course, it must happen. And that's because he, this here is the dispersion relation. And one property of this dispersion relation is that it's not linear. This dispersion relation, if you write it in terms of frequency, and then if you write k in terms of the wavelengths, then this will become h bar omega is h bar squared over 2m. You will have 4 pi squared of a lambda squared, and this dispersion relation, and this you can also write as a as 2 pi h bar times the frequency. So for electromagnetic waves of photons, you know this is true, right? But for these free particles which have mass, the dispersion relation is the new lambda squared is 4 pi squared h bar squared over 2m times 2 pi h bar. Feel free to simplify this mass of 2 pi's and 4 pi's. Now this is 4 pi squared. Feel free to simplify this as much as you want. So if you were to simplify it, you would have 2 pi, 4 pi squared will be divided by 2 pi, which will give you 2 pi. With this 2 will give you pi h bar squared over 